Oh, thank you for joining me. My name is Gary Norfield and I'm known for writing and drawing uh, children's comics and children's novels these days. Um, started off making my own, own little homemade comics and through that I got to meet other cartoonists and one chap I met was working on Horrible Histories magazine and he got me a job on there so I was kind of illustrating and drawing stuff on there and then I worked on Horrible Science magazine. Heard of Horrible Science? Both very famous um, magazines and uh, so that's very exciting to be working on a proper magazine that was really exciting my kind of dream job and um through doing horrible histories and horrible science managed to get myself a job on the beano and i had my own beano comic show have you heard of the beano very old very famous comic been running since about 1938 they're still going strong and uh, i had a comic strip in there called uh, derek the sheep uh, derek's a very grumpy sheep doesn't get on with any of the other animals on the farm and so it was really good fun to write and draw i like kind of drawing grumpy characters and um, what did I do after Derek Sheep? Um, I worked on The Dandy, another very old famous comic. Uh, not around anymore, unfortunately. I uh, did Pinky's Crap Pot Circus for that, which is good fun. And I've worked on a Phoenix comic. Have you heard of the Phoenix? And the Phoenix is um, not quite as old as the, as the Beano. It's only been around for about seven or eight years. But it's a really amazing comic full of kind of great humor strips and adventure strips. And my comic strip was called Gary's Garden. And it's all about the weird and strange creatures in my garden. I've got kind of ninja foxes and hedgehogs in there. And I've also got uh, a little ladybird dressed up as Tarzan. I've got grumpy caterpillars, more grumpy characters. And so I really enjoy doing that strip. Still doing a few more of those uh, quite recently. And what else have I done? I've done dinosaurs. Do you like dinosaurs? Uh, I've got a book called The Terrible Tale. Towers of the Teeny Dinosaurs, about a little gang of dinosaurs discovering the world and getting up to all kinds of crazy adventures. I enjoyed that. It was a big kind of brand new 80 page book I could play with all double page spread. And uh, that was really good fun to work on. And so I said novels as well. So I've also been working for the last five years uh, on writing and illustrating children's book novels. In particular, this chap, Julius Zebra. You may have heard of him. Maybe not. You have heard of him now. And Julius Zebra is about um, a young zebra who gets caught up and uh, kidnapped by Romans, taken to the Colosseum in Rome, because he lives during the ancient Roman times, and he gets thrown into the arena. Now, that's kind of what the Romans used, Romans used to do. They used to grab animals from around their vast empire, which encompassed Europe and Africa and Asia, and they get all these weird and wonderful animals and say, look at these crazy creatures we've come across on our travels. Show off to the citizens of Rome. You know, they didn't have television or uh, internet back in those days. The only time you got to see stuff was maybe a little painting on the side of a pot or something like that. So uh, so if you want to go see a real kind of zebra or giraffe, you go to the Colosseum and you see these animals you go, wow, look at that. And the Romans say, yeah, they're even better than that. Look how brilliant we are at hunting them. And then they go get their arrows and stuff and they kill all the animals. Pretty grim. Um, reading. I'd written a comic strip about this in another uh, magazine I worked for called National Geographic Kids and I drew this panel with uh, the animals in the Colosseum but I didn't like the idea of the Romans killing them so I had all the animals fighting back and that's where I got my idea and that inspired me to um, talk to my publisher of Teeny Tiny Source to say look I'm going to do a story about an animal that fights back in the Colosseum and that's where Julius comes from. Uh, so yes, so these little kind of sparks. I love reading history. I read lots of books. I'm always reading books. Even as a kid, I was always going to the library, getting books out on all sorts of subjects. Dinosaurs and magicians and always books out on ants, <laughs> ghosts, ghost stories. I was always reading ghost stories and asterisks as well. I used to read lots of asterisks books. I was very inspired by history. And um, so I'm going to help you... Uh, create your own casting character, maybe in a similar vein to kind of uh, Julius Zebra or some other kind of characters I come up with. And um, and then we'll take it from there. Maybe we can do some comic strips based around that character. So first of all, I'm going to show you how I kind of draw my cartoon characters. So I'm going to show you how I draw Julius, of course. We'll, we'll dive in with Julius. And the way I approach, approach my cartoon uh, drawing is quite, sim quite simple. And um, so hopefully you'll be able to pick up. You can draw along with this. Uh, so we're going to draw Julius and I like to break down complicated shapes into kind of easy manageable shapes. You can kind of just see, oh, which side am I? Julius behind me there uh, on my yellow chair there. And if you can see, I've got my dog Stanley there. Ooh, Stanley. And uh, so we're going to draw Julius. So his head is shaped uh, like a bit of a sausage. Well, not a bit of sausage, a whole sausage. And, and that's the first one we're going to draw. So we're going to draw a nice 
sausage shape. Yeah, that's quite sausagey, I think. I left a bit of space up here uh, for his helmet and around here with even space for his body, etc. So that's about where you want to put uh, your sausage shape on your paper. And don't worry about it being perfectly drawn. Look at this. This is quite a scribbly drawn uh, sausage. Um, we're not here to draw the Mona Lisa. Oops, dropped my lid. We're here to draw Jolly Comics. So if it comes out a bit weird, brilliant, even better. And because uh, we're here to draw funny comics at the end of the day, and we've done a weird looking sausage shape like an old balloon or something. Brilliant, great fun. Now, uh, next thing we're going to draw is the shield. Now, I've actually got a shield here. This is not a real shield. This is what I take on my, my school events. And um, here we go. There's a nice jolly lion on the front there. Uh, nice, simple round shield. Gladiators in Rome, because Julius trained as a gladiator in my book. And um, they had small round shields. So we'll draw a nice, simple round shield. Now, we're drawing a shield first before the body because we're going to draw the body behind the shield i've got i've only got like a black pen so i can't do any rubbing out or anything so i've drawn the shield first i'm going to draw the body behind this shield and julie's bodies you might see behind me above my head or next to my head i should say it's a bit shaped like a kind of pear i guess is a good way to describe it so it's quite thin at the top of his neck and then it comes out and there's his nice round bottom there and so there we go so there's his body here's his head and the shield, very simple shapes we're starting out with. You think, why are we just doing the shapes? I want to get in with some details. Don't do any details yet. In case you've done a really, maybe it's, you're not quite happy with a drawing and you've put loads and loads of details in and then after about 10 minutes thinking, oh, oh, I don't like it. It's all gone wrong. It's all the proportions are wrong, etc., etc. And you've got to rub it out. Well, you're rubbing out lots of hard work. So wait till you're happy. Get the basic shapes down and then do the details when you're actually happy with the drawing. Now, what have we got? So we've got head, body, knees and toes next so we're going to draw uh, the zebra's arms and legs uh, anybody here ever tried to draw a horse or a zebra well done if you have you probably find it it's very hard to draw horses especially their arms and legs arms do horses have arms their legs they have four legs and they're all kind of elbows and knees completely impossible to draw well unless you're an amazing artist um, I used to draw horses all the time for horrible histories I used to have a picture of a anatomy of a horse on my desk because it was gosh it was so hard to draw a horse's arms and legs arms keep saying arms they haven't got arms gary they've got legs uh, so yeah so to get around that as a cartoonist as you can see from the drawing you kind of draw bendy kind of um pipe cleaners or like a rubber hose um and you'll probably see this in a lot of cartoon characters like mickey mouse etc um and it just makes life easy when you're drawing these characters especially if you've got lots and lots of drawings these books are very thick it's like 300 pages and you've got lots and lots of drawings in there. You don't want to be sitting around all day trying to draw elbows and knees. And so you draw these kind of pipe cleaners. So the first leg is going to be kind of coming out here. And I like to keep my drawings kind of full of action, not just kind of static and standing around. These characters are always on the move. And so we've got a nice pipe cleaner leg coming through there. And on the end, a little kind of black hoof. And then we've got another leg trailing behind, kind of flipping up like this, just to show that Julius is... It's kind of running, really. So that's it. That's the legs. And now we're going to draw his arms. Now, Julius is going to be waving a sword around. Here's an actual sword. A real sword I bought from a real shop. It's a real plastic sword. And so we're going to break that down to shape. So that's just like a T shape. So there's your T. And there's a kind of round, weighty bit on the bottom. And then your blade. And so we're going to draw his arm. Then he's going to be holding his sword. We're going to make... Leave some space for his helmet there. There's his hoof. And so there we get the T-shape. So I'm going probably very quickly here. T-shape and the round bit. So you've got your arm. Oh, it's like a pointer. Got your arm there. Your T-shape there. And then we can draw the blade pointing upwards. Like I say, leave a bit of space. Don't have it kind of coming across his head. Because we're going to be drawing this quite grand helmet on his head there. Right. Hopefully you've all caught up. Went a bit quickly. Do apologise. And got quite a lot to get through. Going to draw his helmet. Now his helmet, as you can see on the drawing back there, quite complex. So we're going to break that down into shapes as well. So another sausage shape on top of his head. It's like a kind of flattened um, halo. And then we're going to draw a semicircle on top like that. And then on top of that bowler hat, we're going to stick like a kind of 
chip shape. And on top of that, kind of brick shape we've got on top of his helmet there, we're going to put a oops, kind of big ostrich feather because that's what the kind of gladiators had. These big, grand, colourful ostrich feathers, just like a big cloud on top of his helmet there. And you have these big, colourful ostrich feathers because you want to stand out from the crowd. You're in a big gang of gladiators in the Colosseum arena. And um, your fans are up in the high seats trying to look for you. And there you are. There he is with his big blue uh, feather. Right, so that's the kind of basic shapes. And now we're going to get some details in and some expressions. So the first, next thing I want you to draw is his eyes. Okay, just two very simple circles. And we've got to think about what Judy is thinking. Is he scared? Is he angry? Is he happy and excited? I think he's going to be angry. He will kind of be fierce when you're a gladiator. So he's going to go in there all fierce. Now, if you put a fierce face like this, look at the eyebrows. Look at this. They're coming in like a V like this. So let's have a V like this, just like my eyes. And already, look, put the pupils in. He's looking very mean, like, like this. And as you do that, you're kind of showing your teeth, you're baring your teeth. So we have Julius baring his teeth as well. And there is a very aggressive looking zebra. Although he's not a zebra, he hasn't got his stripes yet. We'll put the stripes on in a minute. And um, before we put the stripes on, let's get some nostrils on. And he's going to be wearing a nappy, for want of a better word. It's actually called a subligaria, um, which is what all kind of trainee gladiators used to wear. It's like a kind of big folded nappy. And we can get some lines and some folds in there, some nice details already. And there we are. So we've left some space now. We, we know where his clothes are, etc. and his helmet is. We can put the stripes in. So this is all the details now. We worked out all our shapes and we can just start filling it in with our details. Stripey legs, stripey arms, stripey belly. Nice and simple. There's Judas zipping off into battle. And uh, what else do we need? Um, ears, get some ears in. He's got his helmet on. And they're squashing his ears down, so a couple of flattened triangles there. Uh, maybe a tail as well, just coming out as a very scribbly tail. And also the shield. Now, where's my shield? And um, always got some kind of pattern on the shield. This one has got a picture of a very grumpy looking lion, so you can put a lion on there, or you could put like a geometric shape, like a triangle or squares. I'm going to put another grumpy animal on there. Uh, what can we have? A grumpy <sighs> goldfish. I like drawing goldfish. Oh, this is a weird looking goldfish. What have I done? There he is. That's <laughs> a goldfish. Oh, more textures. Is that right? I don't even know what that looks like. That's not a goldfish. Anyway, um, we have some arrows sticking out, like sticks with little feathers on the end, just to show he's had a bit of a battle. Oops. Oh my gosh. It's a very bad drawing day today for me. Doesn't matter though. It's a mad cartoon. Um, what else do we need? Maybe some nicks and some scratches on his sword on his helmet and then um, just a shadow we don't want him floating and he's in the Colosseum which is all kind of sandy and rough so we'll get some sand in there so now we've got a cartoon camera we'll start putting some details and give an idea where he is um, get the arena into like a kind of semicircle running behind him as the arena floor and then the arena wall so kind of semicircle pointing up with it maybe there's a that's the door they come in. <laughs> Look at that door. <laughs> what a beautifully drawn door that is. And um, we, before I do what's up here, we get a speech bubbling because it's a cartoon character. And you're thinking, well, what's this zebra saying? Well, in the book, everyone keeps mistaking him for a horse. It goes, I'm not a horse. So we'll have that. I'm uh, look, not a horse. Now, you may have noticed. I'm doing a speech bubble. I've written the words first. Well spotted. That's because you should always write the words first. Some people do the speech balloons first. Think, right, I, can do, I know where the balloon's going. Shove the balloon in. Can't quite get all the words in. What a big mistake. So do the words first so you know exactly how big your balloon's going to be. And there he is. A nice tidy balloon. So all your friends and family can read your jolly comics. 
and it's all nice and clear. And so that means I, I know exactly where the roof is going on the Colosseum. That's going to go behind here. Another curve. Give an idea of the curved Colosseum roof. They have these flagpoles. A bit more extra details. And then we get some crowds in. Now when you draw crowds in comics, just a bunch of circles really. You don't want to draw every single human being. Be here all day. You see this in football comics in my old in my day when we had uh, Roy the Rovers, etc. It'd just be some circles. And I used to think, well, that's a bit silly, but no, you can understand as a cartoonist. You think, okay, I understand why you've just drawn little circles. And there we go. So you've got your cartoon character, which we started drawing as basic shapes. And then got the environment, got his characteristics. So it's quite easy, you know, you think, take a zebra, turn him into a gladiator, got a fun, jolly character. And you've put him in Roman times. So they're all star stories start sparking from these are sort of ideas. So what we're going to do now, I want you to create your own cartoon character. Let's get rid of this. Right. Bye bye, Julius. Running over here. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a list, or two lists actually. I'm going to divide this paper in half, and I want to create two lists. One is a list of all kind of weird and wonderful animals on this side and on this side a list of weird and wonderful jobs for want of a better word occupations and um, so the first thing we're going to do is find some weird and strange animals so obviously we've got a zebra we could have like a crab that's a nice jolly one what else? We want something kind of all weird, straight, strange shapes. Um, we can get uh, or a spider. Um, what other animals are there? there are lots of different animals in the whole world. I mean, you've got you can go off road a bit. You can have a dragon, and that could be. You can even have a dinosaur. I think all the different dinosaurs you could have. There's my dog Stanley. You can have a dog. Obviously, I'm just doing things that begin with D now. Let's have something else. So uh, we could have a hamster, a rabbit, and down the, the pet road here. Um, what other kind of animals are there? Maybe go down the insects, get some bees and ants. Oh, come on, think. Oh, big animals. They think big. Get like a bear. Oh, my handwriting's gone crazy. Uh, wolf. Maybe a whale. Anything, we're just trying to think all different. Just to give you some ideas. Um, we don't have to choose any of these. Maybe we've got some other ideas. Maybe we want to go really off-road, have a unicorn. Right, so that's a list of kind of strange, interesting looking animals. Uh, now we need some strange and interesting jobs. Uh, so we can start off with like a witch, maybe. Uh, astronauts. Uh, what other things you can have like a cowboy or cowgirl pop star ninja police pilot um, what other amazing jobs can we have uh, superhero Which we've had witch may as well get a wizard in there as well. Uh, oh gosh, trying to think of some other things. Uh, what else do we have? We normally have soldiers, detective, dinner lady, anything really. If you can think of your own mad jobs, not that. Dinner lady is a mad job in case anybody's mum is a dinner lady. Uh, any interesting jobs, put it down. So what I want to do now, I want you to pick any animal that you see on here. Or if you've got one of your own, that's fine. And any job. So here we could have a dinosaur pop star or a bee astronaut or a hamster pilot or a spider superhero. So just one weird animal with an interesting, exciting job. And I want you to do like how, I want you to create a character. I want you to kind of draw that character. Do the thing where you break it down into manageable shapes. So if you just, by example, doing um, 
a dinosaur, say you want to do a T-Rex, how do you break down a dinosaur into shape? So you've got the big head and a big kind of body like this, another pear shape really. And then you've got their big legs. So just think very simple terms with your animals. Don't get too scared. So just very simple shapes. And then you've got the big tail, big floppy tail and little arms. And then you can start putting in all sorts of details and textures. Maybe he's got some spikes down his back with his eyes, little horn. And then obviously if, whichever animal you're choosing, whether it's a crab or a dragon or a bear or a dog, think of the textures. So if it's dog, it's quite hairy. Um, if it's a bee, oh, they're quite hairy as well, actually. Uh, so dinosaurs are quite scaly. So get some little scales, little use for scales. Really think about the textures of your animal. Um, again, so if it was a dog, there's a dog down here. Just don't get trampled on by a dinosaur. So it's a very hairy dog doing lots of little hairy bits like this. Maybe make him really hairy. It's just like a big <laughs> toilet brush. Uh, so yes, so I want you to draw that. But one then I want you to think about the characteristics of your character. So maybe he's angry or happy or sad. And um, if he's angry again, got the V-shaped. But if he's sad, the eyebrows should go on the side like this. With a sad face. Um, what other kind of uh, eyes can you have? Um, there's another dinosaur popping in from the side there. Triceratops. And maybe they're tired. So just do a line across their eyes like this. Again, the sad face. So it's kind of a mix of the eyes and the mouth make up the kind of the characteristics of your character. And uh, so what I'll do. I'll give you sort of about five to ten minutes to draw your own, create your own animal and think about what costume you're going to wear. If you're a pop star, you have like kind of sparkly clothes, maybe some mad sunglasses. Uh, with a witch, you're going to have like, you could have cloaks with like moons and stars on and spell, like a wand with spells flying out. Uh, superhero, you can go to town with superhero, so many different things you can have now. But you can just do your basic kind of Superman thing with a cape and wearing pants on the outside. Or you could go like a down an Iron Man route. Kind of like an iron dinosaur or an iron bee and uh, so yeah but really think hard about um the kind of costumes they look uh they wear i should say and integrate that into your drawing a bit like we did with judas where he's wearing the subligaria and he's got the helmet and the sword and the shield and um okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to pick an animal myself i'm going to go with oh what am i going to draw i'm going to draw i'm going to stick with a dinosaur i quite like drawing a dinosaur actually and he's going to be a dinosaur superhero why not so i'm going to take these off so you carry on drawing and i'll draw one as well so now what could my superhero be um i think i'll do the kind of, uh maybe i'll do something like the flash why not I do something like the flash like a kind of very speedy character i don't know if my, i might do a triceratops actually let's do a triceratops watch a triceratops got a big kind of pan on head long nose with a horn and if you're flash, you think about your pose as well when you're doing your character. Um, if you're having a bit of trouble working out the pose, get a friend to help you out. And so if you're running, just think of the shape of my body of a triceratops. It's kind of leaning over like, like a big egg. You've got short stubby hands and arms. So I've got my basic shapes there, and so I'm gonna do like a kind of uh, Superman type thing, uh, with the kind of underpants on the outside, and maybe we'll have a mask on like the Flash does. Just over his face like this, so there's his eyes. Oh, it's kind of cool actually. I quite like this idea of a superhero Triceratops, and maybe my one's scared. <laughs> So get your eyebrows on the side like this. So he's got his kind of mouth as a sweated a bit. And don't forget his tail. Whoop. Nice floppy tail like this. And what about his top? Let's try and think of it. He's got his neck. 
line there. Maybe just wearing a t-shirt. And with the Flash kind of character, we're going to have like a lightning bolt. Like that. And we need some zoom lines. Zoom, zoom, zoom. A bit of a shadow there, just to show off the ground. And maybe some sand, uh, some dust kicked up. And what's he thinking? Let's try to think. He may be running away from some kind of terrible super villain. He's going, hey, he's after me. He's, oh, I can't write with his pen. And instead of just doing a normal kind of roundy speech bubble, we do a spiky one just to show his shouting. So we're playing around with all different speech bubbles. Got shouty ones, you've got thought bubbles, which are like clouds, and with little kind of circles coming down to your head. And uh, so, where is he going to be? I mean, is he in the jungle? I mean, if he's dressed as a superhero, maybe it's kind of modern, like a modern day superhero. So, maybe he's racing on the pavement. So, really think about where your character is. So, we're going to have a dinosaur in modern times. Maybe he's a time traveling dinosaur, and maybe he's got this kind of cityscape behind him with all kind of tall skyscrapers got some little tiny windows in there yeah maybe maybe it's a time traveling dinosaur like that idea yeah. so when you're doing kind of buildings just uh, do all different si sizes and shapes it's always like a pointy church somewhere some aerials Couldn't overcomplicate. So there we go. I need a kind of superhero name. Oh, I haven't done the textures actually. Get the texture in. So he's a super. Uh, he's a dinosaur. So he's kind of very scaly. So these little scaly bits in. Is so there we go. It's got the textures in the costume, speech bubble, background. Got my new speedy dinosaur as a triceratops. I'm trying to make a name for him. Uh, <laughs> I'll fix that later. Uh, so anyway, hope you're getting on well with that. That's probably about five minutes we've done so far. Um, I could try another one. Let's have another go. Maybe I'll do his super villain. We finish quite early after ten minutes. Get a second character in. We have a second character. You can kind of come up with all these interactions uh, with your character. So what super villain? I could have a a T Rex. Uh, could be after my character. And it could be like, um, uh, what kind of villains do you get? You get like a, ooh, what was in the Marvel films? Like Loki, or you've got Doctor Doom, sort of super villains. Uh, so it could be like a robot, there we go, like a robot T-Rex. Wow, that's a nice idea. So really big, chunky squares. Big, and we can have these robotic legs. Nuts and bolts in. And sort of a panel of buttons on his belly and kind of slits for eyes. Wow, imagine meeting a it's bad enough meeting a real T-Rex, but a big robotic one. That wouldn't be very nice, would it? Right, here we go. his little arm still even though they built a robot one they thought yeah we'll, we'll still make him have little arms give him like a mechanical mouth maybe it lights up and again the tail make it kind of uh, rather than smooth make it all kind of angular Kind of metallic -y lines and things like this. That's nice, I like that. <laughs> when you do kind of metal, always get these kind of like these heavy scribbly lines that kind of give a bit of a shine to your metal. 
Wow, look at that. Sort of a mecha T-Rex after our Triceratops. And it could be saying attack. And he'd have a square speech bubble because he's a robot. And with a kind of lightning bolt uh, bit coming down. Nice, I like that. Very good. How long have we got? Um, so that will probably do, I think. Seven minutes, eight minutes. If you've got a bit more time, just pause me or something. I don't know how it works. Uh, but if um, what we're going to do now, we're going to do a comic strip based on these two characters. Or well, if we've just got the wrong character, that's fine. So this is just me doing an example of how to create a comic strip uh, using my two characters. So you don't have to copy this at all. It's just to kind of inspire you and help you on your way. Um, so I want you to get another piece of paper and divide it into four. Um, when we do a comic strip uh, like this, um, you can kind of break it down into four four simple uh, panels. And the first panel is always like the establishing shot. And you'll see this in every kind of medium like TV and film. Uh, if you're watching Coronation Street even or EastEnders, you know, it's always telling you exactly where you are. You're in the street, there's the uh, Coronation Street itself. It always starts off letting you know exactly where you are. And um, so I've got like a metropolis city with a speeding dinosaur and a big <laughs> robot one maybe it's a bit like a kind of robotic godzilla thing so maybe i could just start off with a huge dinosaur rampaging through the city basically so just so you know exactly what's happening very simply on the first panel now like i say you don't have to draw this this is just me showing you very quickly because the drawing is going to be quite rough on these and there's like um There's the city and a big uh, metal dinosaur rampaging through it. There's my mecha T-Rex. And uh, smashing through all the buildings. Uh, attack. Get some more uh, skyscrapers in. So you know exactly what's going on when you look at this. What we would do if I time to draw it even better. There we go. Maybe people screaming, ah, help, Pee. So there's a rampaging robot coming through my city, and that's how I'm starting off. So you kind of like you're coming back, you're not going in for a close up, you're kind of coming back. There's the cityscape, there's your big dinosaur. Something exciting is happening. And so we need a reaction to that. And that's going to be our superhero. Our speedy, t uh, speedy Triceratops. And so what can our... He could be looking up. Or she looking up. Maybe going, oh my gosh, I need to stop this. So we need a kind of different kind of angle. Because um, sometimes when I do kind of... I do lots of school workshops and uh, festival workshops. People like to just draw the same panel again and, and again, but with different speech bubbles. Always kind of vary your your um, your panels. Get some different drawings, different angles in. You'll look, you'll see this if you look in comics. There's always kind of close-up shots and weird angles and things. Make it um, varied and interesting to look at. You've got an interesting story, but make it visually interesting as well. And uh, so we have a nice close-up this time of our dinosaur superhero, open-mouthed. There's our Triceratops. Got a superhero mask on. Hands on hips. Witnessing all the destruction. And maybe just saying something very basic. Get the old costume in. Maybe saying something very basic like, I need to stop this. Maybe we can have some bricks flying around. Things falling off buildings, just debris and explosions and things. And he's caught in the middle of it. So what does he do? So we've got the establishing shot, we've got a reaction, and now we need something exciting to do. So maybe speed in, maybe just flies at the dinosaur and bops in one. So we can have like this kind of 
flying movement lion and at the end of it is our tiny t-rex again it's very small compared to this picture here and it's just zipping in like this yeah always make funny noises when you're drawing and you're going to clunk our mecha t-rex right in the chops Could have an explosion kind of shape there and maybe we can get some um uh what's the word uh, get the big words in there. i've forgotten the word what's it called uh sound effects oh my gosh go mad get the big sound effects so we can get a big bop or bash or a clonk and our robot's being smacked in the chin It could be saying something like, have that. <laughs> I don't know. Have some of that. He's a cockney uh, triceratops. Have some of that. And now, so, we've, you're just making this up. And it's like, wow, I've got an exciting story. I've got an exciting, massive robot dinosaur. There's my superhero dinosaur. Come to save his days. Taking him out. But you've got one panel left, and this is the punchline. And this is the half, and you've got to kind of tie things up. When I worked on the Beano, that's the best advice my editor said, always have a good punchline at the end. Now, normally I could sort of sit all around all day, and I've got to, oh, I can have a good old think about a punchline. But now I've only got a couple of minutes, so I've got to come up with a very funny punchline. I don't know what I'm going to do. So what, let's have a look at what we've got. Um, we could do the thing where you twist it on his head. You think it's been an evil robot. Maybe it's just been a nice robot. It doesn't appreciate being boxed. So oh, I'm just looking for somewhere to live or something like that. Or, oh, sorry about that. I, do, I, I just got a bit lost or something like that. Or, or thank you, you knocked out my tooth. It's been getting on my nerves. I might do that. So he's bopped him in the chin. So you kind of, you twisted it. You, you're given an unexpected thing. You're kind of thinking, oh, hooray, he's knocked out the villain. He's like, oh, he wasn't a villain. It was just a, a robot with toothache. The robots have a toothache. Maybe he's got a mechanical tooth which is getting on his nerves. Oh, there we go. So we're going to do that. So there he is holding his mouth. And where we had these teeth, actually, yeah, let's get those kind of uh, teeth lights he had. And maybe we can draw one which is black now because it's been knocked out like that. And it goes, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'd really rotten toothache. Cool. Thank you. A terrible toothache. Toothache. Do apologise. This pen is useless for writing um, letters. It's great for drawing. Can't write words for toffee. And their little triceratops is here. Hands on hips again. That's his kind of pose. He's going, oh, that's all part of the service. Here's my bill. <laughs> Here's my bill. He's charging him for his dental work. Robot bits in. So that's it. So now we've got a four panel comic strip, very simple comic strip. So we've got a big robot dinosaur attacking the strip, so that's your establishing shot. And then you've got the reaction to it. So we've got our little superhero going, Oh, I need to stop this. Then you've got your action packed uh, shot where he bops the dinosaur to stop him in his tracks. It turns out he had toothache. Knocked out his tooth. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, that's all part of the job. Here's my bill. So there we go. So it's quite easy to get a brand new character. This is a completely brand new character and completely invented in the last 10 minutes and turn it into a kind of a funny jolly character and create a story around it. So it's very easy. I tend to work in my sketchbook. Here's my sketchbook. Um, I've been working on some the latest book I'm working on, which is about a Viking. 
and also doing some Gary's Gardens. And what I do, I kind of just scribble characters, like uh, spiders sitting in cobwebs. Maybe they've got some flies sitting around them and having little conversations with the flies they've caught in their cobwebs. And just by drawing little kind of scenes like this, like um, uh, we did with the speedy dinosaur, ideas start sparking. So hopefully with your character, um, have them interacting with other characters, have them in the situation, um, in their environment, and hopefully ideas will start sparking just from drawing these simple things. And, um, well, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I think that's it now from me. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope it all made sense. You can always rewind and watch again. Um, I've had great fun. I quite enjoy his character. I might nick it for something. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.